just waiting for the light to move over the horizon there. There's a few clouds. And then I should set up for a couple of shots. Um, I'm here at the top of Kosciuszko, which I've uh, never been to before apart from snowboarding. I'm here with my friend Nick and we're going to take a few shots. Well, actually more than a few. We're going to be here for three days shooting uh, landscape. When I started photography, I definitely gravitated towards street photography. And, you know, as I've kind of progressed, I've definitely moved further towards portraiture and landscape. I find it a lot more rewarding and I'm getting more into like outdoors, particularly multi-day hikes. So I thought I'd bring you along to this one. I'll be talking a little bit about the composition and, you know, how I'm setting up some of these shots as well as just including a ton of B-roll, which will be really fun. Uh, we just hiked up here today. It's kind of getting a little bit late in the evening and we're setting up at a spot called Aries Tor, which is a really famous landscape uh, location. And there's a nice kind of like little river in the front of frame, like a, almost like a tarn, but it's running water and with a big rock formation in the background. We've set up the tent already behind me and we're just gonna be staying around this area, which should be really nice. Uh, today's video, all of it will be shot on the FX30 and I'll be shooting most of the stills on the Alpha 1, so it should be cool to see. Yeah, this looks beautiful. Ignore the, uh, the close-up shot of the mustache. So we set up for the shot and the light's kind of like uh, not quite on the formation at the moment. We've got a couple of photos, but I think we left it a little bit late. Well, I left it a little bit late because I was doing the intro. Nick was on time. So there's good light behind us. You can kind of see about there. Um, we might wait and see if there anything pops in the sky up behind the formation, like up in this area. We're going to wait and see if we get any reds or like some deep oranges. I don't think we will, but it would be nice. Good way to start the day. Yeah, why are we laying down, Nick? So, the sun is right behind us, which is great for the photo we're taking. But also, we can't ha we can't be standing behind our cameras because our shadow is just on the foreground. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to lay it down every time we take a photo or run away. So initially, we were much more preoccupied with having the light on the rock, but I think for this composition, now that the light is more subtle and we're getting a little bit of orange in the sky, it actually looks a lot better. So having a bit more muted colors in the shadows is kind of nice. I think that's uh, a better look for a lot of these kind of landscape shots. The view behind me has a lot of color, but we're only getting a little bit above uh, Aries Rock just up here. Um, but I think it's enough and I'm gonna move around, take a couple of different shots. I'm not really doing any bracketing. I can fit everything in one exposure these days. I used to bracket a lot because that was just the way that think people did things, but you know, it's not really that important anymore. So Nick's gonna do a couple of shots. He's gonna be doing a bit of blending, which is awesome. I can't wait to see the result of that, but I'm probably just gonna shoot single frames because I'm lazy. <laughs> So I don't know if you can see, but just behind me over there, there's already a little bit of fog rolling in and it's only, ooh, what time is it? Probably like 8 p.m. maybe? No, probably not 8. It's probably a bit earlier, but there's already fog rolling in. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be waking up to a whole fog covered mountainside. I'm really excited. There's tons of light still on the horizon behind me. It's probably going to be clipping a little bit, but that's all right. Um, but there's also like one thing I've been thinking about for tomorrow or even tonight if there's any like light still in the sky is I don't know what type of flower these are but there's all these wild flowers all over the ground so I think I'm going to crack out the 20 mil 1.8 and get nice and low try and stretch the perspective a little bit of lots of foreground elements should look really nice there's like a lot of yellow flowers but then there's also these really soft blue ones which I really like Outside, I'm like, 
orangey, but So we've woken up, sunrise is just happening there behind me. It's a beautiful morning, it's got a nice golden glow. I'm gonna shoot a little bit into the sun, whereas I think Nick wants to shoot a little bit away from the sun. I guess just that, that it gives a bit of variety, which would be kind of nice. At the moment, I'm looking at this uh, rock structure directly over behind me, got a couple of shots of it already. It's got like a nice, uh, nice shape and a nice point to the top of it. And the light is kind of like folding around the rock, so to speak. So that's looking really good. Um, see how it looks. Just walked back over to Aries Tor. The light's kind of hitting the side of it now, which we didn't really get yesterday afternoon. And I'm not really sure if this is a sunset, sunset or a sunrise spot. But we're going to take a few shots and just see how we go. up the next day and I shot a little bit at Luau like got a few shots that I'm really happy with and then we kind of just wandered around until we spotted some brumbies and we kind of followed the brumbies for maybe maybe an hour hour and a half and got some pretty cool footage like I mainly shot on the FX30 because I, I wanted to use that crop to give me some extra reach so I could shoot 4k 100 frames a second on the 2470 and just really punch in giving me a effective focal length of maybe 120 millimeters which is pretty pretty useful considering i didn't really bring a telly with me um and after that we've kind of just packed up our stuff we're drying out our boots and our socks and the things now just from you can't really tell in the background but a lot of it's tarns and like small little creeks and rivulets so it's like really really damp um so all of our stuff's a little bit wet we're gonna chill here for a little bit, just uh, hang out, eat some food, and then decide what we want to do because the light isn't going to be amazing pretty much now until sunset. <laughs> so we're probably just going to hang around, um, check out some of these other rock formations and then kind of set up for sunset this afternoon. got a bit of time up our sleeves because clouds are rolling in and it might rain this afternoon so I'm kind of going around looking for some compositions that I might use later on today uh, if the sunset actually happens there's a good chance of high cloud but it looks like there's quite a lot of low cloud as well so I'm gonna go around find some nice composition in among some of the rocks there's also a creek just down there that I really want to go check out um, and we'll see how it goes but I'm not optimistic Nick is though I don't think it's go I don't think it's going to happen. So it's only maybe like 2 p.m. on Saturday, but we knew that there was a chance of rain. There was only meant to be maybe like 30% chance of about four mil around 4 p.m., but the clouds are looking so nasty. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. And 
We're going to hunker down for the night anyway, but it would be nice if we could get some sunset shots. So we made it back in one piece, but we did have to trek maybe, maybe about a kilometer and a half in the dark through marsh and swamp. And then we got to the chairlift and the, the chairlift was closed. So we then had to make our way down the mountain bike paths for another like five or six kilometers before we finally made it back to the car at about midnight. So that was a bit of a trek. Um, the trip was definitely worth it though, like just by looking at the shots that we got, like I'm so impressed and really, really, really proud of some of the landscapes I've captured, especially because I've shot a lot of landscapes in my time, but I've never really slowed down and taken the time to think about composition and just leave the tripod there and just wait for the light to do what I wanted it to do. And that was something that Nick really encouraged me uh, to kind of follow through with on this trip. And I'm really happy with that. Getting back into YouTube is also something that's kind of on my goals list for this year. I really want to grow the channel, but also produce videos like this focused around photography and the travel that I do as part of that. And this is a really fun way to do it. And I want to keep it casual and fun. Nothing like a big hype cinematic edit or anything like that. Massive thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video. Uh, they're my go-to platform for finding royalty-free music to use in my videos for both clients, weddings, and YouTube. Um, they have a pretty comprehensive library. You can filter by mood, theme, genre, beats per minute, instrument. Like it's got so many, so many categories that allow you to filter through and find the music you're looking for. And they always give a recommended. So based on the songs that you've already searched before, there's a spotlight to call out new and emerging artists. And the Artlist platform is so user-friendly and intuitive. If you'd like to use Artlist, Use the link down in my description. You can get two months for free. And obviously that does support me as well and helps me grow this channel.